Hey everyone, so I'm sure you saw in the title of the video, uh, this is my truck I'm doing, injectors in it, it's a 2003 LB7 Duramax, it's pretty common for these trucks to have injector issues. I'm going to walk you through the steps of doing the injectors, I'm also going to do another video of setting the valve backlash on them. It's a good idea to do that whenever you're doing injectors, you know you're already in there, you're already at your valves, it's a good thing to check. Um, a pretty common issue, one of the reasons why these trucks have injector issues is dirty fuel. So one thing that I already have is an Air Dog 165, a fast system will do just the same thing. I don't really have a preference either way, they're both great. I am installing a cat filter this time. Um, I got this on Lincoln Diesel. I also got my injectors through them. Uh, this is the first time I've ever ordered through them. They seem to be good. Um, I can keep you updated as I use some of their parts. One Another thing to consider whenever you're doing the injectors on this truck, um, the high pressure fuel lines get very corroded on these older trucks and it is well worth the money to just get all eight of them and replace them while you're doing the injectors. You'll see that as I tear everything apart and I'll make sure to, you know, show you the corrosion and why it's so important to replace them. But you'll see that down the road in this video. And also run a fuel additives which give lubricity to the fuel and that also helps the longevity of your injectors. Alright, so I'm tearing into this here. As you can see, the grill is already off. Um, I'm going to start on the passenger side of the truck, so the air intake is going to be coming off first. I have to take off the intercooler piping here. Once I get that off, then the fuel injection control module has to come, the fuel filter head and the fuel filter, the fuel lines for that also have to come off. Then we should have pretty good access to the top of the valve covers there. And if you look down in there, you should be able to see one of the, or the high pressure lines. And the fuel rails right there so that's just kind of getting started on where we need to get to and that's just the passenger side we're also going to have to be draining the cool one out because once we get over to the driver's side we're going to have to pop the cool one hose off here and so we don't make a mess we're going to have to drain that out there is a plug on the i believe it's the bottom side on the passenger side of the radiator that you can drain it Alright, so as you can see now, I have the fuel injection control module off, the fuel filter head off, the intercooler pipe and the air intakes off, and you can see you have a pretty good view of the cylinder head, well, the valve covers. So just as an update, you know, as you're doing this, the bolt sizes, or the head sizes to get this stuff off, it's a 13 millimeter for the fuel filter head. Um, the bolts that hold the fuel injection control module on is a 15 millimeter and the banjo bolts for the fuel injection control module fuel lines are 17 millimeter. Now that these are off, I'm going to take this bracket off for the fuel injection control module and this bracket for the fuel filter head. And I'm probably going to end up taking this coolant line off. And I should have a pretty clear shot then on pulling this valve cover off and getting right to the injectors. Alright, so now I am now pulling the high pressure fuel lines off. So, as I've said in previous videos, the best way to keep track of your nuts and your bolts and your parts that you're pulling off is using brown paper bags and just labeling them. Then you can just throw everything in it, then you know, just everything's right there and you're putting it back together and like I said I was going to show you why you want to replace your high pressure fuel lines so if I can get this to focus here this is inside the fuel line it's not focusing very good sorry about this But that is what's going into your injector. So if I were to put that 
old fuel line back onto the injector I am now going to be introducing that dirt and just it's not going to be a good seal you know whenever you're doing all this work and investing this much money back into your truck you are way better off you know investing in putting new high pressure fuel lines onto it they're only a couple hundred dollars whenever you're putting two thousand dollars into injectors it's worth it and just in case I forget in later videos you do want to put white lithium grease on these high pressure lines on the outside here where they go through the upper valve covers when you tighten it down you just put the white lithium grease right in here okay so we're back here working on the driver's side so as you can see here the valve covers are off you know the injectors are out it's pretty much ready to reassemble um you know as you can see i kind of have everything laid up over you know the wiring harness is kind of out over the side of the truck here but this side's definitely harder than the passenger side and you'll find out whenever you're doing this yourself the little allen head bolts on the back end are really hard to get to because of the steering shaft and the fuel lines right there i went through a couple different trying to use um, extensions and knuckles and just regular allen wrenches and i finally ended up getting it it was a pain and one thing that I ran into whenever I was pulling one injector out, which I never had it happen. I know it can happen, but I wasn't really expecting it. I pulled the injector cup out along with the injector. And I didn't completely drain the coolant system because I didn't think I was going to have to. You know, I drained it enough that I, you know, I could pull all the coolant lines off on top of the motor and I didn't have to worry about any of that. But I was just trying to save antifreeze because I just flushed the system a couple thousand miles ago but anyways needless to say the fill or cylinder got filled up with coolant and i had the draining system anyways quick i did cycle the motor around with a wrench and ran the piston up the top dead center which pushed most of the coolant right back out but i'm still gonna have to try to figure out i'm probably gonna blow, use an air wand or something blow it out maybe spray some oil in there too I don't think I'm going to have any issues with that. And before I assemble everything here too, like I said before, I'm going to set valve backlash, which it should be good, but I'm just going to go over everything too and also show you guys how to do it.